two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Okay. Hello, hello, internet world. This is Norma Joe, rebel, enemy of the state, um, opposer of the new world order and all that shit. Yeah, man. On this channel, God, the light is always going off on me. On this channel, we're gonna have some rebellious shit. We're gonna have some craziness. We're not gonna listen to the man, you know. We're not gonna follow fucking rules. We're gonna blow up parliament and all that shit. Okay. Let's get back into this. So this anorexic uh, insomniac was just ousted to be a vampire apparently, so it makes some sense. Cream's brown eyes narrowed. That's my roommate, you stupid fuck. He snarled back menacingly. Man, Cream was defending him. A few people snickered. The cub dropped his arm, then pulled it back to his chest, cowering slightly. Very slightly. Who told you he was a vampire? Cub just blinked at Cream and then looked rapidly around the room before just looking back at me. And then to Zeta behind me. Him, he did. Zeta sputtered on his beer. No, I didn't, you little whore. Zeta shot back. Wow, this is actually like kind of metaphorically similar to real life where blame is just thrown around and fingers are pointed and everyone's like, you're the bad one. No, you're the bad one. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you did. You said he's pale and skinny because he doesn't sleep and only eats blood. That's what you said. I could feel my skin get completely iced over and my stomach drop. Quincy. There's a whole apartment for you to be in and you have to be like right in front of my camera because he's an asshole. Oh god, kill me now, I thought to myself, even finding pictures of yourself ass naked on someone else's wall is not this humiliating. I did not fucking say that, Zeta shot back, ugh. Or I guess it's like, ugh. His growl was bestial as he glared around the room. Searching for our housemate. Perth! Yeah, he called from the kitchen. He crept out, a confused look on his face when he saw the mood the room was in, just blankly staring for a moment with his mouth open. What? Man, what a party killer. Farsi and the manicurist peeked out from the kitchen doorway could I, to get a look at what was going on. Did you tell Cub that Nushi is a vampire? Who's Cub? He answered blankly. Cream pointed to the boy, looking more and more awkward by the moment, while Cream stayed fuming and tight-lipped. Oh, huh, yeah, Perth answered, breaking out in a grin. So of course a fucking joke started it all. Yeah, huh, I told him that. I mean, shit. It was just a joke. He did some more laughing. Oh, don't tell me you really believed it, kid. Man, this is why no jokes are allowed. We're not allowed to ever joke. Everything has to be serious all the time, says the New World Order. By now, the most of the guys were eyeing Perth, and so did Zeta and me. Perth opened his eyes, and his laughter disappeared pretty quick when he saw all those eyes on him. Huh. Now the guilty laugh. You didn't believe it, did you? He pressed up nervously against the doorway, rubbing it lightly with one hand. He still had a little bit of a smile, uh, though. An embarrassed one, I guess. Maybe. You told me, Cub answered squeakily. Oh, you told me. I guess that's how he goes. Kid, I was joking. Don't call me kid, goddammit, he yelped. I am 28 fucking years old. <laughs> He's older than all of them. I had to give him another look at that. He didn't look 28. You shit for brains, Cream growled. It was a fucking joke, Perth fired back, finally losing his smile. It was just a joke. Can I do that? Jeez, it was just a joke. I relate to that shit. You can't fucking say anything without... I mean, you can't joke, you can't express your opinion, can't fucking do anything. We just want a bunch of fucking robots coming off the assembly line. 
this fucking world. Alright, chapter 7, Granola. Here alive with slang today, a completely random, that's right, random and unrelated collection of answers from your favorite people, the people of your town, to answer this very important burning question. What does the word granola mean to you? It's like someone with no- oh, each one of these is like a little bullet point, so it's like each line is supposed to be a different random person responding, I guess. It's like someone with no pride. No nuts. Like, when you just don't care about stuff, I think then you're granola. Wait, shit, granola does have nuts in it. Change that to no balls. That's funny. You know, someone that'll lay down and let you piss in their face. You know, like that. I don't know, what the fuck. Granola is a term for a person that's in the Progressin' for Science program. PFS for short. A sick fuck that sells their body to science. Some kind of PFS thing. A bit of a derogatory term. Huh, <sighs> my daughter has taught me that one. Yep, the words of the youth are coming into adult culture. Hee <laughs> hee. That's fucking funny. Granola. What the fuck is that shit? Somebody spineless who sells their body to science? What the fuck? Some sick, sick shit, man. Serious stuff. You heard of vivisection. It's not just for mice, man. Not anymore. Selling your body for money. Worse than being a whore. That's why everyone fucking hates them. Least whores don't work for the system. Becoming more accepted nowadays. It's just sort of like stupid lazy, I think. Um, but yeah, originally it did come from the science industry. Granola came from the science industry, okay. Always going to be controversy, but... And then one just says dot 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 dot. Granola, you know, sweet and wholesome. Huh, granola person. That was like the randomest fucking chapter ever, but at least none of these people got described. So for all you fucking people out there that say like, oh, there's not enough representation here, there, wherever. Not, you can imagine these people looking however you want. Any way you want. Isn't that great? That's pretty much what I do now. I don't give any explanation because I'm just like, do you say how they look? I'm cool with that. Chapter 8. Sparkle. Bindo looks straight ahead when he flops down next to me at the bar. Beer isn't nearly as bad as food, but my cup is still almost full. Well, he's on his third. And he doesn't have beer, it's something else. <clears throat> is it whiskey that I drank earlier? No, I'm really tired. That's the third time he's been up to go vomit. Ew. And they're still giving him drinks? Huh, <laughs> that's irresponsible. Or try to, at least. I don't know if he has much success. I know something's bothering him. When he comes back, I look at him for a few seconds, then down to the floor, then back to him. I know, Bindo, and whatever's wrong will come out sooner or later. Yeah, you mean like when he throws it up? Like that's how it's gonna come out? <laughs> Not that I'm looking forward to it. He knows exactly the things that are wrong in the world, and he'll take you right there and show you things. I can't know, but maybe someone did that to him back way before he met me. And he had no choice but to carry it on. Or maybe no one ever showed him. He just finds these things because of how he is. Either way, he'll take you there. And I was nervous. <sighs> it could be the war in Africa. Or just down the street where a cop snatched this homeless but not orphan child. I doubt Bindo is trying to get drunk when he shuts his eyes and gulps his drink. down. I think he's just trying to distract himself away from thinking, but he should know better if he knows himself. Like I know him. He's got a mind like a pit bull. It doesn't let anything go. That third cup is almost gone before he shakes, like he's ready to vomit right at the bar. Don't do that, you're gonna get kicked out. And puts the cup down, pushing it away. He hunkers down and folds his arms on the surface top. And laid his chin on top of them. It's like one of the most worst disgusting things. It's like if you already have drank enough 
to make you throw up and then you just drink more. That's like so horrible. Um, they must be at some shitty bar if they are continuing to serve him. God damn it. Oh, there it is. Let me put this thing away before it gets lost. Um, where was I? Did you know Sparkle? Huh? Sparkle, sparkle, he answered, closing his eyes. That cute Oki. Who says Oki? From 45th Avenue. Oh no, it's gonna be some fucked up shit. Let's see what it is. I blinked at him, trying to remember. Some apartment, somewhere, sometime. I couldn't bring anything to come. I shook my head. No. Bindo sighed. Well, you met, he said. If you saw him, you'd know. <laughs> Okay, I paused. The bootlegger. Oh. Oh yeah, I do remember. Oh, I realized then how dark this could really be. He's dead now. Dead. Killed. I blinked at him. I didn't know this little oaky bootlegger too well. Oaky bootlegger. What is this? The fucking 20s? But, okay, it's cool. But I could just be- Oh, and by the way, is that- a That's probably offensive too, because that's a stereotype too, right? Isn't it? I don't know. But I'm, I don't know, it's down kind of on the list of, like, people that are cared about. But still stereotype. So, you know, more offenses. Um, da, 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 da. But I could just barely remember a snapshot. He was newt, nudie. I don't know what that means. How you like a newt. Slender and sticky. I guess that answers my question. Nervous, big-eyed. He was young. Probably as young as Perth. So like 20, I think. I think they said Perth was only like 20. <laughs> not only that, but 45th Avenue is not far from my home. How? Red nose. I stared at him. I knew assassinations were not as few and far between as some like to think, but still. How do you know that? Couldn't have been anything else, he growled. Oh, I didn't growl that, but okay. His teeth were starting to gritted. I could hear it. Camille told me. And he was there. He was there that night. He sort of hissed, whispered that part out. Can you fucking believe it? Poor Camille. No, he muttered. No, at some point everyone will be a witness to something. He sighed angrily. We are. I nodded. We are. He closed his eyes again and pushed a hand roughly through his tangled hair. It's not like people say, you know. It's nothing like it. Huh? What do you mean? People think they're slick. They're quiet. They lead people off into dark alleys or some shit and press chloroform over their faces and kill them with muffled pistols or something. Right through the heart or head, all fast and tidy and pretty. Well, hey, I don't think anyone thinks it's pretty. Well, then, why isn't anyone doing anything? He shot back. Oh, simple youth. Before the answer to that is obviously because the world is fucked up and people don't give a shit. I go yelling about this shit and people just laugh at me. It's all status quo to them until something happens to their son or daughter. Ugh. And you know what? When it does happen to their sons and daughters, people are so fucking stupid. They blame themselves or the kids. Sometimes the Don, but not the hitmen. No, they never blame the goddamn fucking hitmen. Uh, hitmen are just pawns, I said. Right then he opened his eyes and gave me one of those dangerous glares. Well, yeah, he just basically just openly disagreed with him while he was freaking out, so whatever. Uh, it's hard to say the right things, especially with Bindo. Yeah, that's fucking true. And somebody's like all, all freaked out and high strung. It's like, you gotta walk on fucking eggshells and shit. Um, there's a lot of damn hitmen. What about them? What if they just decide they were gonna stop? Don't talk shit, I said. It's their job. They love it. And even if they don't, they love the gang and the Don helping out charities and shit. Charities? What the hell? That's funny. I want to see a Godfather movie like that where it's like, oh, but I support charity. <laughs> um... Fuck you, he answered. 
<laughs> he just told his friends straight to his face, like, fuck you. Look at this fucking bump of- this is just hair, like, I can flatten it, you know? It's just hair, but it makes it look like I have a fucking beehive or something. It's like fucking, uh, what's her face, uh, what's her fucking name, the alcoholic bitch that was the singer? Uh, I don't remember, you know who I'm talking about, that fucking singer that had- she kind of single-handedly brought back the the uh, the whole rockabilly shit or whatever, or the new wave of rockabilly. What the hell was her name? They try to make me go to rehab. Yeah, what the fuck is her name? Amy Winehouse. Yeah, it came to me finally. It makes me look like I have hair like hers. See, you see this fucking beehive? All right, whatever. Um. But I know he knows at least a little bit wrong because he mutters under his breath instead of screaming at me. I'm sick of fucking hearing it. Uh, yeah, I'm sick of fucking hearing things too. This and that about the charities, they try to make it seem like the mob is some big guardian angel. But it's a mob, no she? They hurt people, they kill people. Just like they killed Sparkle. Sure, they might protect a lot of people too, but what's the price? Yeah, I can fucking relate when every single fucking person around you is like telling you like, No, the system's fine. The system's good. And you're like, fuck the system. The system sucks. The system is hell. Anyway, Sparkle didn't have to get involved with them. I said, looking down at the counter, that was his choice. He didn't have to get into the bootlegging. I didn't see how Bendo was looking at Meow. And I figured that was probably better for me at least. I only dare to get in between Bendo and the things he hates once in a while because we're friends. It's kind of like putting your hand in between a terrier and a rat. <laughs> if you don't know him, more like putting your hand between a leopard and a gazelle at full chasing speed. I've seen him on people in bar fights or street fights. Trying to claw out their eyes over some comment. What a maniac. I've been the one yelling at them to stop. We're trying to pry his teeth loose from someone else's body. There's no cops in this world, I suppose. But those other people didn't know they should leave it alone. Because they didn't know Bindo. Because they're not his friend. And if they were, well, they could... Be like me, getting away with stuff I've never tried to do. It's on the other, it's like on one hand I relate to this guy Bindo because okay, when I wrote this story when I was eighteen, this is obviously like I was like that, like so emotional. Say the wrong thing, I'm a bit fucking triggered to fucking hell. And it's like real. Like when you when you get set off, like, we didn't call it triggered back then, that's like a new term, but like, it's basically, that's what it was, you know. When you really get set off emotionally, it can be hard to control yourself, you know, like, it's real raw emotion, you know, it's not a fucking act. Sometimes it's, for some people, it's an act, but for some people, it's like, your emotions are really firing off, you're really going crazy, you really are 18, and you're like, fucking... Like, just hearing that shit just shatters my entire world and is just pulling every organ in my body in another direction and just, like, it's physical agony and I will just am go fucking crazy because you said this thing to me that I just hurt so bad and I can't handle it. But it, in hindsight, as a 30-year-old now, it's, you know, jaded and just, you know, been around the stupid ass world we live in long enough to kind of ha have all that shit sanded down. Now I see it from the other perspective, I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's a lot of work to be around somebody like that, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I can sympathize, but then at the same time I'm like, if you're super emotional, you are a pain in the ass, you know what I mean? And I was, that's for fucking sure. I tried to hide it, okay? I tried really hard. I didn't fucking get in fights like this motherfucker. I just wrote it in my stories. 
and you know I don't know I can't try to keep it to myself but anyways I'm already at 20 minutes but there's literally only like one more page so I really want to finish this shit let's see I know it's not gonna fucking go anywhere but okay all right it's a catch-22 I guess just like with the mob <sighs> something happens in these people's lives that brings their world crashing down on them so they run to the mob or the cops who were just a branch of the mob anyway <laughs> They, uh, they run there because they've been told since grade school and off children's radio that the mob help, help, helps. Oh, it's so good. It's so weird that they apparently live in like a pro-mafia world. <laughs> but I know that that's, it's, it's a metaphor for, you know, the system, but it's just trying, like, I was trying to show the ridiculousness of the system by calling them a mob. I think something like that. Anyways. Um, they'll pull you out of your deep deepest hole. They'll do anything, even though the second most thing associated with the mob is... F and it's funny because it says mop right there. A little bit of uh, dyslexia going on. Is fear, guns, blood, knives, the stuff of kids' nightmares. But maybe they think that's all it is, nightmares. They let themselves think that their fear of the mob is just fear of all the bad luck going on around them. They're panicking. They don't have time to think it all out. Sometimes they got friends that push them towards the mob. Any whichever ways they go, then they gotta pay the price. Bindo doesn't have to tell me. I know at least half of all bootleggers die. And Sparkle probably knew that too. He just probably didn't think he'd ever get caught. Who does? I've been daydreaming again. I wonder if I missed a lot of what Bindo said. Well, like I said, it's pretty exhausting to listen to somebody like that. When I come back, only about a second has passed. Hmm, interesting. But he did, Bindo answered darkly after a pause. He did what he did. Maybe it was a mistake or maybe someone pushed him. But you're not going to tell me he deserved what he got. I didn't say that. All right, end of the story. End of this horrible, horrible thing. Look, on the back of the notebook, there's like a picture of a, ch a cherry or something. Strawberry. Ch it's like a mix of strawberry and cherry. And then there's like somebody's phone number up there, which I'm sure is, has been reassigned. I don't remember whose phone number it was. And who the fuck knows who has that number now. It would be funny if the same person had it, though, and it was, like, somebody... Because I still have my phone. I've never had another phone number, except for when we had landlines, obviously. Because those are different from house to house, and, you know, we moved and stuff. But, or actually, we might have took our landline with us. We might have had the same... I remember we had a couple of different landline numbers. Like, at least two. But, anyways, I have always had the same cell phone number. I've had a couple of different cell phones. But I've always had the same number. And, uh... It would be fucking funny if this number is, like, still belongs to somebody who, like, went to UC Santa Cruz. I don't remember who it was at all. It's a 626 number, which is not Santa Cruz. Not the Bay Area. And not Sacramento. I don't even know if it's in California. It's, I don't think... Who knows? I don't know. I don't know what 626 area code is. If it's in California, I'm, I'll probably look it up after I end this video, uh, just for fun. It might be LA, it might be, LA probably has a bunch of different area codes, because it's fucking LA. But, um, yeah. Anyways, this is done, this offensive fucking shit, this spawn of the devil, this, you know, um, uh, you know, this rebel rebel fucking shit, enemy of the state shit. No more New World Order, no censorship, we will run the streets red with our beast blood, we will worship Dionysus and, you know, turn our fucking brains off and operate only on the lizard brain, and da 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 da. Anyway, it's finally fucking over. So, uh, I hope and pray that the next story I pull isn't so fucking offensive. But, for all I know, it might be even worse. I don't know what could be worse than this, you know. 
But, uh, anyway, <laughs> good night, everybody.